Hey everybody, a viewer recently requested a video on how we can fix Social Security. And I thought it was a really great idea. So we're going to go through some of the ways that the U.S. can potentially save Social Security and keep paying benefits to everybody. Um, before we dive in, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. Get a top 10 list of stocks to buy right now from The Motley Fool. It is the best way to support this work I'm doing on YouTube. So again, fool.com slash Frankel. Check it out. And hit subscribe to my channel if you don't already. I cover Social Security very often. Um, so be sure to keep up with all of my latest content. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. So just a, cup, a little quick background information. Uh, there's a lot to get through, so I'm going to go quick. Social Security is not in the best financial shape. So based on the latest projections, and I've covered this on other videos, Social Security is expected to run out of money in 2034, so about 10 years from now. After it runs out of money, it would be able to pay about 79% of its scheduled benefits. So worst case scenario, important to note, if Social Security runs out of money, we're looking at a 21% across the board cut in benefits. That's if we let Social Security's reserves completely run dry, there would still be enough money coming into the system in the form of payroll taxes um, to cover 79% of the benefits that are promised. Not ideal, but that's the worst case scenario. That's important to note. And this isn't the first time we've seen this movie before. So in 1983, this is the most recent time. I was very young, but it, it happened in my lifetime. Social Security was months away from being depleted. Months away, not like 10 years like it is right now. This is why over the past couple of decades, we've seen the full retirement age gradually increase from 65 to 67. That's why Social Security benefits can now be taxed for higher income retirees. And there are a few other changes that were made in 1983 to fix the system. So history tells us that something will be done to save Social Security. The question is what? There's a lot that can be done is the short version. So I'm going to go through these slides pretty quick because there are a lot. There are 16 that I could think of, and there's probably others out there um, that can be done. All of them fall into pretty much one of two categories. Things that reduce the cost of the program and things that increase the revenue coming into the program. Those are the two ways to save Social Security. So number one is the most obvious, cut benefits across the board. Um, so you can either, the, the two obvious fixes, I should say, that might not make sense with what's on the screen right there. The two obvious fixes are to reduce benefits across the board. I mentioned a 21% benefit cut would, boom, fix the problem. On the other hand, of increasing program revenue, a 3.33% increase in the payroll tax would solve the problem. So half of that's paid by employees, half by employers. But we could either reduce benefits by 21%, increase payroll taxes by three and a third percent. Neither of those are popular on either side of the political spectrum. Those are generally thought of as terrible ideas. So number two, we could reduce certain types of Social Security benefits. We could reduce benefits for spouses. There are spousal benefits worth up to 50% of the, the other spouse's benefit in cases where you know one parent was a stay-at-home parent for their whole career. Um, for survivor's benefits, for benefits given to children, which are you know a lot of people say that's an area that could be cut. So that's one option. Reduce the cost of living adjustment, an unpopular option. Um, but one thing that's been floated is changing the way the cost of living adjustment is calculated to what's called the chain CPI. Um, essentially, this is a version of the inflation calculator that assumes that when inflation happens, people will start buying inferior products. Um, if we do that, then benefits would naturally grow, grow slower over time. Again, retirees, if you've seen all these cost of living adjustment stories in the news in the past month or so, because it was just announced last month, um, retirees like their cost of living adjustments. They They help them keep up with with expenses without cutting back on lifestyle, not a popular option. Um, number number four is to re, to kind of tweak the benefit formula. Um, right now, Social Security is calculated with a three-part formula that favors lower income. Uh, the first X amount of dollars is multiplied by 90%. The next certain amount of dollars is multiplied by 32%. And the highest amount of money that can be included in the calculation is multiplied by 15%. There's talk of rolling back those higher two percentages, which would have the effect of lowering benefits primarily on higher earners. Um, so that's one option to reduce the flow of money out of the Social Security. 
Uh, number five would be to use more than 35 years of work experience. Right now, the highest 35 years of work that you of earning that you've done are averaged together to help produce your benefit. If that was raised to say 40, not everyone's worked 40 years. There would be a lot more zeros included in the calculation, and the average benefit would go down. Um, number six, we could use inflation to index earnings. Right now, if we, I mentioned the heart, the 35 highest earning years. Right now, those are all your years are indexed for not inflation, but because of wage growth. The, the if we change that to inflation, wage growth is has wages have grown faster than inflation for decades. So if we changed it to an inflation-based indexing system, it would result in lower benefits being paid out. Um, another option, larger reductions if you decide to claim Social Security before you reach full retirement age. The current reduction percentages are six and two-thirds percent for every year early, up to three years early, and 5% per year, per year beyond that up until age 62. Um, so if those percentages were higher, um, it would result in less money being paid out of the system. Um, number eight is kind of the opposite, lower increases for delayed retirement. Right now, you can claim Social Security as late as age 70. If you wait beyond your full retirement age, your benefit is increased by 8% per year um, every year that you wait. Um, if that was reduced to, say, 7% or 6%, it could reduce the money flowing out. Um, we could raise the full retirement age. This actually is a more popular solution than you might think. Um, the current full retirement age is 67 for anyone born in 1960 or later. This could be raised. There's the, the common ages that are being floated are 68 or 70. Um, and it wouldn't jump all at once. It would be like kind of how the, the new full retirement age has been phased in over a period of about two decades. Um, so something similar could be expected to happen if the full retirement age was raised. And number 10 is to increase full retirement age, or I'm sorry, index the full retirement age to life expectancy. So if the average life expectancy in the U.S. goes up from, I don't know, 80 to 82, you could expect the full retirement age to rise by two years as well automatically. Um, so that's one thought people have. So those, the first 10 are all ways to reduce the program's cost. Um, the next ones are going to be ways to increase revenue. So number 11 is increased payroll taxes. Currently, employers and employees each pay 6.2%, up to a certain amount of taxable payroll every year. Um, I mentioned earlier a three and, two, and a third percent uh, increase in payroll tax would do the trick. Um, so half of that would be borne by employees, half by employers. So increasing payroll taxes is one way to do it. Um, payroll taxes could be part of the solution. I don't see just a massive payroll tax hike by itself being the way to go. Um, but I don't know. Number 12, we can eliminate or increase the wage cap. In 2024, all income up to $168,600 is taxed for Social Security at that 6.2% that rate. So it only applies to those earnings. Anything you earn above that is not taxed. So high earners actually have lower uh, Social Security taxes as a percentage of income than lower earners. Um, so we can eliminate or increase that maximum taxable wage cap. Number 13, and this is actually a very popular solution, is to create a second Social Security tax bracket. So, for example, every all your earnings up to 168000 and change in 2024 would be taxable. And then anything you earn over, say, $500,000 would also be taxable for Social Security. So it will create a, sec a higher Social Security tax for the highest earners. Um, that's actually a very popular solution. Number 14 is just to tax Social Security benefits like regular income. Right now, only higher, earn, higher earning retirees pay tax on Social Security, and at most up to 85% of somebody's Social Security benefits are taxable. That's if they're earning a lot of other, other income from their investments and work or whatever. Um, so if we tax it like regular income, it would definitely increase the flow of money into the program. Fifteen to use general revenue to help fund Social Security. Right now, and historically, self, Social Security is self-funded. Um, the main source, there are three sources of income for Social Security. Um, the payroll taxes that you pay, the interest that Social Security gets on the money it holds in reserves, and 
the money that comes in from taxation of benefits on higher earners that I just mentioned on the last slide. There's no outside money that goes into Social Security. Like if you're paying income tax, that money doesn't help fund Social Security. So if that could change, if if Congress wants to you know, direct some general revenue from the Treasury to Social Security, it could definitely help bridge the gap. Um, and number 16 is to eliminate the earnings test. Right now, if you claim Social Security at 62, 63, and you earn over a certain amount, your benefits can be withheld. Um, so eliminating the earnings test and just allowing people to start collecting Social Security at 62, even if they're working, um, would encourage more people to keep working and therefore paying into the system. Because if somebody retires early because of the earnings test, they're not paying Social Security tax anymore. If they keep their job and keep working, they are paying Social Security tax. So it would encourage more people to keep working. Um, so those are the six, 16 I thought of. The actual solution in the end is likely to be a combination of more than one thing. Um, it was in the past. It should be again. Uh, I'd love to know what you think they should do to fix Social Security. Um, leave me any comments you have. I'll do my best to answer any of them individually. And hopefully you found this interesting and fun. I, I, I had a good time trying to uh, do some research and figure out the ways that we can fix Social Security. Um, and hit subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.